Friends, hello everyone! My name is Pavel Filipov and I'm head of advertising and public relations at Solar Group. I'm very happy to welcome you today on this live broadcast at this big reporting webinar for 2023, where we will summarize the interim results of the Doing of Modus project. We will talk about what has happened in the project over the last year and recently. And of course, we will discuss so much at Solar Group. We will talk about everything related to the technology of combined winding Slavyanka and look at all of it from different sides. We will talk about the tasks that have been realized. We will talk about plans and goals for the near future, for the long term as well. And of course, we will look at the numbers. Numbers, figures are the best indicator to assess how we are doing. There will be a variety of speakers for you today. Of course, it is CEO of Solar Group, Sergei Semenov, who will make a welcome speech and tell you something interesting and share some important news for the project. Also, Konstantin Roshkov will speak today. He is an expert on corporatization. He will tell us at what stage we are currently working in terms of corporatization and what work in this direction we will launch in the very near future. There will be a big report from Sovelmash, where Alexander Sudarev and Mitra Duyunov will tell you about how things are going today at the Sovelmash construction site, where Sovelmash is going, and what are the latest news related to the company's development and the project as well. We will talk, of course, about how Slavyanka technology is developing today all over the world. Andrei Lobov, an engineer and entrepreneur from Russia, and Viktor Aristov, a person who has been cooperating with Dmitry Duyunov for a long time, developing Slavyanka technology today mainly in China, will talk about it. They will tell you about achievements that the technology has today in many different countries, what projects are underway. This is usually very interesting as well. Pavel Shatsky will also speak. He will talk about the actual figures, about the achievements of the project over the last year. And in general, we will see what results we have today. How many investors, how many investments, how many partners we have. All the specifics that you like, we will definitely announce all of it today. At the end, we will watch a video where our partners from all over the world will speak, so that you will once again remember that the Doing of Modus project is indeed an international project that brings together the most diverse people around this big idea. I suggest that we move straight on to the first speaker. And of course, the first speaker is the CEO of Solar Group, Sergei Simonov. Let us welcome him. Good afternoon, dear investors and partners. You are at the Solar Group reporting webinar for 2023. Those of you who follow the project know that annually, at the end of the year, we gather together to provide a detailed report on what has been done and what we are planning for the near future. The webinar speakers include all the key figures in the main project development areas. I will share two major updates with you today. The funding of our project consists of 20 stages. Today we are at stage 18. And I would like to announce the date on which stage 18 changes to stage 19, which is December 29th, 2023. That's the first piece of news. The second one is sharing what stage 19 will be about, what its main objective will be. In my opinion, it is conducting corporatization. We are launching it, or rather the preparation for this corporatization at stage 19. It will consist of three sub-stages. The first sub-stage is the formation of the list of shareholders. It is a time-consuming, long process that will take place in our back office. It will involve collecting questionnaires, verification and polling on whether to entrust the shares to Solar Group or to get the shares of Solomash straight away. The second sub-stage is the reorganization of limited liability company Solomash into joint stock company Savalmash and Solar Group obtaining a share that represents the share of all the investors. And the third substage is the transfer of the share received by Solar Group to all the participants who prepaid their shares. This is a rather big job. Everything that will happen further in this direction 
will be discussed by my colleagues at this webinar, will be presented by them. And I would like to remind you that we already have a lot of things to be proud of. We have already come a long way. In my opinion, it is probably 90 or 95 percent. It is more than six years of work. Those who actively follow the project know that 2023 was the most productive year in the development of our project, both in terms of the amount of funding that we were able to attract and secure together with you, and in terms of promoting the project, which Solmash did. But at the same time, I would like to say that we have not yet cut the ribbon, we have not reached the finish line, and I assure you that the most interesting things are still ahead of us. So stay tuned, watch the webinar. And I'm handing over to my colleagues. Let's say a big thank you to Sergei Semyonov for such great news. Sergei touched on the topic of corporatization. This is indeed a very important topic that concerns all investors. A large number of questions are asked on this very topic, and I'm glad that we are finally starting this process with the beginning of the 19th stage of financing. There are a lot of nuances, a lot of aspects. And that is why I would like to give the floor to the corporate lawyer Konstantin Voshkov, who will tell you in more detail about what this process will look like and how our back office will help you in this. Let's listen to him. Dear friends, I'm happy to welcome you on this live stream dedicated to the results of our project in 2023. My name is Konstantin Roshkov. I am a corporate lawyer, and my area of activity includes support of companies wishing to reorganize themselves from a limited liability company to a joint stock company. The process of corporatization will be divided into three stages. During the first stage, a shareholder register will be created. During the second stage, the reorganization of Savalmash will begin during which 49% of Solomon's shares will be transferred to Sol Group. During the third stage, Sol Group will transfer shares to its shareholders in accordance with the register that will be created during the first stage. With the launch of the 19th stage of Sol Group financing, the first stage of corporatization begins, that is, drawing up the shareholder register. A special function will be available to each shareholder in his, her, back office starting from January 2024. This feature, this function is intended to allow each shareholder to enter his or her data into the jail register of shareholders to receive his or her shares in the future. We have already presented a mock-up of such functionality during our conference in Moscow, but at the moment we are at the final stage of development and it has already been submitted to the IT department for implementation and for further development. Now, I suggest investigating the special functionality in the shareholders back office in more detail. On the first page of the corporatization section, we can see all available information about the process of corporatization, where you will find instructions and answers to frequently asked questions. Clicking on the button Undergo corporatization, we get to the section where we need to choose which type of owing shares will be preferable for us. At the moment, there are two types of share management options available. Personal share management and share management through the managing company, which is Solo Group. What is the difference between these two types of share management? In case of personal share management, the shareholder gets the shares for his or her own use. He or she has the right to use them as he or she wants. In case of transferring the shares to Solo Group, to the managing company, the managing company or Solo Group becomes the owner of the shares. The managing company will be created for such needs, but the shareholder still has the right to manage the shares. The only difference is that in order to sell or transfer his or her shares, the shareholder should notify the managing company, Sol Group. After selecting the type of share ownership, we move on to the next stage, which is filling in personal data. Please note that if you are not verified, you will not be able to pass the corporatization stage. Therefore, at this stage, you will be offered either to pass verification or to check the accuracy of the data you have filled in. After successful verification or checking the accuracy of the data you have entered, we move on to the next stage, which is uploading certain documents, such as 
partnership and investment agreements, and also to the registration of the shares in your ownership. If you have not signed the investment or partnership agreement, you will be asked to sign them and immediately upload them to this form to complete the corporatization procedure. During the next step, the investor should upload additional documents that are required for the subsequent transfer of shares. The list of such documents may vary depending on the investor's country of residence. For example, for the Russian Federation, the investor will need to upload SNILs, or personal insurance policy number, and taxpayer identification number. Once all steps have been completed, you will be able to submit your application to our technical support for review. After that, you will be taken back to the start page, where the status of the application will be indicated as under consideration. On this page, there will also be further instructions on how to receive shares after the reorganization of the Sovelmash Limited Liability Company. These further actions may vary depending on the country of residence as well as the type of shareholding. For example, to receive shares into direct ownership, an investor accompanied by an authorized person of Solo Group must visit the registrar with a particular list of documents. This list of documents will be sent to each investor who has chosen direct shareholding or direct ownership. If the investor is unable to be present in person to receive the shares, he or she may issue an authorized power of attorney to his or her authorized representative or to a representative solo group. In this case, the investor sends the original documents or notarized copies to the address, which will also be provided in the letter. After that, the authorized person accompanied by an appointed person of solo group goes to the registrar to re-register the shares. The transfer of shares is made within three working days from the date of application, if all documents are correct. Some may find the procedure rather complicated, but that is exactly why we split the corporatization process into several stages. In order to make it easier to understand this entire process, we will start issuing instructions. And also, starting from January 2024, we will launch informational webinars, where we will try to answer all shareholders' questions. I hope I managed to give you an overview of how the procedure of transferring the investment shares into shares will be conducted. Thank you for your attention. Many thanks to Konstantin for more detailed information about the topic. I hope that now you have fewer questions. But if you still don't understand something, don't worry. We will continue to release various informational posts, videos, instructions to make everything as clear as possible for you. Because soon you will all have to take part in this process. This process is pleasant, long awaited, and I'm glad that we are launching it. I congratulate you on that. But of course, before all of us get a share in Solmash, before we get shares, become co owners of the business, it is necessary to complete the project. It is necessary to bring it to its final logical point. This is what we are doing now. And of course, it is always interesting not only to listen to the news, but also to watch it and see what is happening in the heart of the project, on the construction side of Sovelmash, how the construction work in terms of the future innovation center is being completed. That is why, right now, we will show you a report from the site, where Alexander Sudorov and Dmitry Duryanov will tell you in detail what news we have, what is happening now in the project, and what to expect in the near future. Let's take a look. Good afternoon, dear investors. The year 2023 is coming to an end. The 70 million meter or counter has come to an end. A whole stage has passed. In November, we have an interesting date. It is exactly three years since we received the building permit in 2020. Here is three years. Three years ago, there was an idea, a project. 
But today we see what stands there. Actually, a serious facility is almost ready. How did it start? It all started in 2017, in June, when the decision was taken to start a public investment project, a crowd investing project. And then the amount of necessary investments was determined according to the state of the economy at the time of the decision. 1.7, 2.1 billion rubles. The dollar exchange rate then in 2017 fluctuated in the range from 53 to 56 rubles with some kopecks. What do we have today? As of today, 2,253,584,700 rubles have entered the project. 2.2 billion. At the same time, this year the exchange rate went up to 120, and now it is below 90.88. What was happening in the economy? Well, we could not have foreseen this. We foresaw that it would not be better, but not to such an extent. But nevertheless, as of today, the project has received 2,253,584,700 rubles. That is the money, the investments that have come in in Sovolmash accounts. The projected figure is 2.1. But it should be understood that over the years a lot of things have been inflated, materials, labor costs, equipment, and many other things. There were different processes, but nevertheless, some thresholds were determined, then other thresholds were determined, the last was $70 million, that is what Solar Group announced. So how much does it take for the project to be completed? We see that it is not complete. Yes, a lot has been done. A lot has been done. But not everything yet. Many people ask, why couldn't something be calculated earlier? And why was it calculated only in October or early November? There is a good reason for that. Look, according to our business plan with Technopolis, the date of construction completion was September 30th, 2023. Naturally, we did not meet that date. But a date is a date. And after the date had passed, a complex commission to check the state of construction worked at the site. All supervisory bodies, all agencies, all those who control the construction process, technical surveillance, construction surveillance, geotrust, they checked everything on the site. It was very important for us. There are several reasons. The first reason it is that we have completed a certain amount of work. The second reason is that as a result of the Commission's work, we have an act, a certificate, a certificate that contains comments or remarks about the construction. 
Why was that certificate necessary and why is it important? Its special importance lies in the fact that in construction it often happens that after the completion of the Commission's work or in the course of the Commission's work, serious violations are discovered at the foundation stage or at the stage of frame assembly. And then, to eliminate these remarks, it is necessary to perform a considerable amount of work on partial dismantling of the facility and re-performance of work. This is a colossal amount of money. It should be noted that we passed the inspection of the Commission with the minimum possible number of remarks. And the main comments, the main remarks were related to the under construction, something which was not constructed enough, let's say. All that had been built, well, the remarks were not so critical. And the elimination of those violations does not require large material and financial resources. From the moment we received the certificate, the certificate of completion, we were able to assess what we need to complete the work, at what stage we are, what we need to do to complete the work and to get a conclusion on the completion of construction. And we have summarized the results. The results are as follows. As of the end of October, we had 62 estimates in the work. With the total amount of work going beyond 700 million. At the same time, some of the work had already been done, some of it had been paid for, some of it had been advanced. And 272 million, 612,000, 112 rubles, 16 kopecks were required to complete the work. This is as of the date of making this forecast. Also taking into account the comments or the remarks of the State Commission and the survey of the facility and our understanding of the work that needs to be done, also by analogy with the work that has already been done, we made an estimate of the upcoming costs of all the work to complete the facility and put it into operation. The amount needed was 470 million rubles. This is the money that should arrive on the Sovolmash account. In total, we had a total sum of more than 740 million rubles. After some time, another week, the amount of estimates dropped to 223 million rubles. And as of November the 16th, the amount of work, according to estimates, 62 estimates were in progress, was 209,438,245 rubles. Because investments were coming in, estimates were closed, we paid for them, so there was 209 million left. But as of today, the number of estimates has increased to 68. Why? Because our employees have checked the estimates accepted them into production, and work has begun on six more estimates. And the amount has grown to 240 million rubles as of today. But it should be understood that, at the same time, the amount of planned expenditures has decreased by 31 million. And it is no longer 470 million, but 31 million less 
it turns out to be 439 million rubles. This amount is decreasing. Therefore, all the figures are dynamic. And I would like to note one thing. The sums to be very decent. Having received these sums, what will we come to? We should come to several results. First, we have to get a conclusion on the completion of construction. Next, we have to get a commissioning permit and put into operation the Sovelmash Design and Technological Bureau, the Sovelmash project. And after that, we have to put all tangible assets on the balance sheet to make an assessment of intangible assets. In order to form the authorized fund that would be subject to corporatization. And to proceed to corporatization, to go through corporatization procedures. And then the share which belongs to Solar Group should be transferred to investors. These are the works that we have to go through. Many people can say, can judge whether the amount is large or small. But now I want to talk about what happened earlier. We have never talked about what processes were taking place, what was going on in the past. But things could have turned out completely differently. The amount I was talking about, saying that we had reached 2.2 billion rubles and that we currently need 439 plus 240 million rubles to supplement it, this amount could have been significantly higher. And actually, the project could not have taken place at all. The first decisive step, which was made with a great deal of risk, with a very great deal of risk, but which predetermined the further development of the project, it was the decision to finance the purchase of metal for the metal structures of the building, to finance the purchase of engineering equipment, technological equipment, including the line for the production of winding retraction, manufacturing of motors, and the laboratory. Not much time has passed. And if we had delayed this decision, even for six months, we would have faced the problem of a multiple increase in the cost of metal, sanctions on the supply of equipment, and in order to do what we did, to purchase what we purchased, we would have had to spend several hundred million more money. I can't name the exact amount, because I name the exact amounts when they are reflected in our accounting. But analysis shows that it would have been more than 500 million rubles. We would not have been able to purchase some equipment at all. Now we had a delay in the heating unit. Why? Because we had to replace the equipment on the documents of the authorization system, the equipment that was specified in the project with the equipment that we were actually able to purchase. It was about the pressure boosting station, firefighting and so on. 
Look, half a billion, right away. The risk of paying such money was colossal. We could simply lose it. That's why Sovelmash team worked competently, clearly. But at what cost? All risks were assumed by those people. That's worth a lot. But that's not all. Then there is another interesting figure. That is how much money has been saved so far. Thanks to the work of our women's team on checking estimates. I have this document. A summary table. What does it show? It reflects how much has been saved thanks to the detailed study of estimates. The amount is small at first glance. 216 million 89,184 rubles 72 kopecks. Add another 216 to half a billion. And we have 700 no, plus. This is exactly the amount we need before the work is completed. It would not be 700 odd now. It would be 1.5 billion if it were not for this work. But that's not all. Employees of the accounting department, of the team, have completed the work on obtaining VAT refunds from the budget. VAT refund in the amount of 126,022,000 rubles. Now another 25 million reimbursements are in the process. We are approaching 1 billion. But that's not all. There is one more document. This is a summary table of arbitration refunds in the amount of 45,809,576 rubles, 90 kopecks. And that's not all. The thing is, well, I don't have the documents, as it was not passed through the accounting department. But these are all the figures reflected in the documents. They are amounts that were saved due to the fact that our employees took over the functions of purchasing materials and many works were performed from tool materials. So they were not charged general contracting, overhead and other expenses. So the total amount that was saved thanks to the competent actions of the team exceeds 1 billion rubles. And if we deduct these amounts from the 2.2 billion rubles we received, which should have been added here, then we would not be talking about any completion of engineering networks, barriers. We would not be talking about them now. We would not. So, I can tell you now about what was going on. Previously, it was not reasonable or necessary to speak about those risks. Now we are talking about them, because a certain stage has passed, we have summarized certain results, and we have reached a certain milestone, when we can calculate the total of what has been done, how much is needed to complete it. And we can actually calculate it, taking into account the current situation in the economy and politics. Because, well, we need to take that into account as well. We have now considered the amounts that we need to complete the work. We have discussed and talked about the risks that were involved we have safely passed those risks. We have passed them competently. Is there anything else that could have been saved? Probably yes. But there is a limit to everything. Every person has a limit.
No one is without boundaries. We have limits in terms of our working capacity. Were there any omissions? Yes, I guess there were. You know that we changed the general contract twice. We changed the team of the Capital Construction Directorate. The entire team was dismissed. There were a lot of personnel and organizational processes. It was the combination of financial control measures and administrative management that brought us to the result. What do we have today? Today we have practically completed, as far as weather conditions allowed, the works on the outer territory. There is not much left. The asphalt pavement is 74% complete. The lawns are 100% complete. Fencing. Well, not this week, but next week we will put sections where the cold water supply was connected. The works on laying off external engineering networks are completely finished. Household sewerage system, stormwater drainage, electricity supply are all connected. One cold water supply inlet remains to be connected. The works on the territory are coming to an end. And the main scope of works is moving inside the building. Inside the building, we have completed works on the heating station. Works on internal engineering networks are in full swing. Works on fire extinguishing systems and automatic fire suppression systems have been completed. Finishing of the administrative and utility building is in progress. The jury, because de facto it has already been done, registration of heating networks is underway. That is, obtaining permission to open the gate valve and supply central heating to the building. We hope that the building will be warm for the new year and will be provided with a centralized heat supply. Some of the technological equipment we purchased is already in operation. It is this equipment that allowed us to finalize the development of the angle grinder and prepare its serial production. We are expecting the arrival of a container with spare parts, the spare parts that we do not manufacture ourselves yet for the angle grinder, a thousand sets, plus parts of the plastic body, which are modeled on our equipment, receiving tooling and injection molding machine to make plastic parts, already in the conditions of the Design and Technological Bureau. And this in order to produce the angle grinder directly in the Design and Technological Bureau. Initially we planned to do it jointly with our colleagues from China to speed it up. But the situation in the world is changing. Everything is changing dynamically. That is why we decided to do it ourselves. And the level we reached in the creation of this facility allowed us to finalize the development of the machine, of the angle grinder. Our specialists tested it in different modes of operation. The tests were very serious. And now the angle grinder is being prepared for certification. As soon as the kits are received, the certificate is received, we will produce the first batch. And this batch will be sent according to pre-orders as well as to investors.
Therefore, we plan to do more, but even what has been achieved already shows that together we can achieve our goals and objectives. I hope that all those who entered the project at the first stages, when there was nothing but promises, words, calculations, have not given up and were confirmed in the rightness of the decision taken. Those who entered at later stages, too, and those who can still enter the project will not be deceived in their expectations. We have come a long way. There is little left, as they say the last step is the hardest. Take care. There is still a lot of time until New Year. I think that in the remaining days the project will move forward. The pace of the project's development now depends on you, on the rate of investment. I think that there is no sense in stretching this pleasure for a long time. It is time to finish construction, installation, adjustment, setup, and start serious work. Customers are waiting for us. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. A good end of 2023. And a good welcome to the new year. I think we will see each other again before the new year. Thank you. Goodbye. Good afternoon, dear investors, partners, and all participants of the project Savalmash, the project doing of motors. Today we are at a large-scale solar group event. This is probably the last big webinar for this year. And especially for this event, for you, we have prepared information from the fields of events, from the battlefields, with construction equipment, with the ground, with the weather, and with everything that we have to face. So, let's now take a quick walk around our building, around the perimeter, and see what processes are taking place. Without going far away, we see the rooms where our transformers are located, or rather behind them. Here we have power distribution cabinets. Here the work is going on in full swing. Power cables are being connected, and they are laid throughout the building to organize a permanent power supply scheme. At the same time, we can also see that the access control system is being installed. It is a system of restricted access to certain rooms. And thanks to the installation of the system, we can boost security, both passive and active security, by controlling the access of certain categories of specialists to the right places. That's really not a bad thing. At the same time, there is a very active work on internal engineering networks. They continue to lay cables, the cold and hot water supply piping system. We also see a lot of light, and now I think that you will see what it all looks like.
Ну и вот сами видите. And you can see for yourself that there are more pipes. That quite large pipes are now growing from the individual heating unit, which will extend around the entire pyramid of the building, both on the first floor, on the second floor, and on the third floor, in the place, of course, where the raw mezzanine is. And it makes us very happy because it is colossal work. And this is a very important point. Thanks to the completion of works on engineering networks both outside and inside the building, new life is breathed into the building, and we are much closer to start using it to the fullest, which was actually provided for from the moment of design. Let's not just say words. Let's take a look at the individual heating unit itself. Here we can clearly see that the pipe supply system is already fully installed, mounted, special sensors are installed, metering devices, pressure devices, thermal insulation are installed. But most importantly, let's go into this room, into this place. We can see that the pit is full of pipes that we are connected to the central water supply system. And today we have physically warm water in the building. But in order to start using it and make circulation in the building and connect at least partially the building to the scheme of the final heating, we need to go through a number of bureaucratic procedures and obtain authorization documents, which is what we are doing now. And now, in the near future, we should receive a response from the relevant authorities in order to start using what we have. A very important task now is to connect the administrative and utility building to the permanent heating system in winter. For this purpose, most of the radiators and all engineering communications have already been installed there. Also, as for the production part, especially one-story annex buildings, in part of the premises, Radiators have already been installed and piping is in progress. The same applies to the testing laboratory. We can see the scaffolding that has been installed. As we have said already, installation is continuing. Here we have lighting fixtures. And now you have been shown only the main strings with lighting, which are located along the corridors, let's say. And now we are continuing the installation of lighting strings which are directly in the production area. And it should be noted that we have four of them on this side and we'll have four strings where we have laser equipment. It should be noted that the quality of lighting here will be at a very high level and will meet all the requirements and standards set by the authorization bodies. Even now, The material that Vitaly Denako was talking about is already being used very actively. A person who knows lighting so well, he knows and understands how these processes occur and how lighting affects the human body. Therefore, based on the information available to us, the lighting fixtures are selected to be fluorescent, and this type of lighting will not have adverse effect on the health of future and current employees, even visually. Looking at the remnants of temporary lighting, which is diode installed under the ceiling, I understand that quite a serious load is exerted on the eyes, while our lighting does not cause such sensations. At the same time, you can see that the temporary storage facility with materials for the formation of ventilation systems is decreasing. Of course, this is a dynamic process and it changes dynamically, because some of the materials have already been taken away, installed, assembled, then new fixtures, devices, materials are brought in, and there are more and more of them in the building. Thanks to that, we will also be able to increase the level of heating of the premises, install filters, and we already have a very high degree of readiness of these systems in the administrative and utility building, and then we'll have to work with these systems throughout the whole building. Some of the rooms 
in the first floor are already being closed and cleaned. For example, the room of the future cafeteria already has a very high degree of readiness. And all that's left is to paint the walls. The ceiling is painted, ventilation equipment was also painted to give a more exotic look based on the project of what we want to get as the result. This room is also an office, one of the services will sit here. And painting works have already been done on the ceiling. And the walls have been painted as well, though in one layer, but well, very little remains to be done. Tiles are also laid in the cafeteria, in the corridor as we walk along, and in this room. But in some places it's covered with a material, a special material, to protect it when doing certain jobs. Let's take a look at what our exhibition space looks like. Let's go right here. The first cleaning has already been done here too. Now we will wet clean it. The ceiling has also been painted. More ventilation devices have been installed, including main ducts. Doors are installed on the first floor of the administrative and utility building. We have quite a large number of final doors. Here you see this structure because decorative panels will be installed, which are installed near the lifts. And in general, it turns out that one cameraman has almost fallen, but well, that happens. A high degree of readiness, very high. Let's go into the premises that will be intended for our colleagues who will come here from other regions, other countries, other enterprises, our partners, the so-called hotel room, we call it like that. The walls have already been partially painted here as well, and some things are being finalized. Doors are being prepared for hidden installation. There will be a bathroom, sleeping places, kitchen, so the exchange of experience, training of specialists, something so much will specialize in, will also happen here. Finishing works are also continuing on the second floor of the administrative and utility building. Most of the tiles have been installed. Here we'll have the so-called aquariums, working areas as well. Here there will be another floor covering. That's why the tiles are not used here. Most likely it will be a special carpet tile. We can see that the ceilings have also already been painted. Now I will shock our cameraman for him to keep up with me. Same here, aquariums. Well, and here we see how the guys are involved in the implementation of finishing. Here, the ceiling is being painted. Let's not stop here for a long time. Let's go further. And here is the preparation for painting. Good evening. Good afternoon, sorry. So, these are the processes that are in full swing here. Here is the equipment that prepares the paint. Smells are very fragrant here now. But this is just the equipment that will ensure continuous operation of our building in terms of ventilation, cleaning, air preparation. You can shoot it here as well. Look how massive the pipelines are. On the third floor, we also see tile laying, preparation for painting as well. Part of the ceiling has already been painted and it's painted in different colors in different zones. We are in the bay window. Here we have a really beautiful view of the territory of the special economic zone. And let's take a look at what we see. The road for the access of future transportation companies that will interact with our materials and products and take them to the markets. 
We can also see the railroad over there. You can see a large metal structure. I don't know whether it will be visible on the camera or not. This is also a transport highway that will allow us to commercialize our project. And let's pay special attention to our site. Today we had record precipitation in Moscow and Moscow region. Everything is covered with snow and unfortunately we did not have time to show you what it looks like underneath us. In fact, we had time before the snowfall in the last days to lay asphalt throughout the whole territory of our site. Congratulations to all of us on that. There are, of course, small caveats here, because most of the site is already covered with three layers of asphalt, the final stage. It only remains to apply markings, and you can use it. And here we had time to finish the formation of only one protective layer. Because, again, based on the temperature on the degrees that the thermometer shows, we understand that the lying of the final thin layer is not reasonable now because of the possibility of future destruction of this asphalt. And we will need to use it for many years. And we will not be satisfied with constant resurfacing or darning of the roadway. Therefore, since earlier the site was prepared for asphalt, backfilling with sand was carried out A special layer of geotextile was laid, then crushed stone as well. It was all rolled and tamped. We understand perfectly well that if we do not cover this part of our site with asphalt, then by spring the cost of these works will be radically increased. Would be radically increased. Because first of all, the site will be eroded by groundwater. Another point is that, well, with the access of trucks, construction equipment, Employees also drive their cars. Well, due to that, all this dirt would be dragged all over the asphalt, around the perimeter of the whole site. This would also lead to additional costs needed to wash all this stuff. So, they made a protective layer, and most of the site is now in asphalt. The only thing is that we see that there is some excavation left. Some rings are still in open format. There is no asphalt there. We need to leave this part in this condition in order to make the water connection. That is to make another cold water inlet. I remind you that the hot water supply is already connected. We talked about it earlier. The cold water supply is also now connected and brought to the building. And we can say that in order to start using cold water at one inlet, we need to disinfect the piping system. Now, I remind you that we are going to finish this work very soon and we will be able to use it for one inlet. And here we understand that the scale is not that big, the scale of a disaster, and we will try to carry out this work very soon. It's not the complexity of work like puncture for connecting sewerage system and so on. Not much is left. And I almost forgot to mention, the fence which we see has already been finalized and installed in the place of the functioning cold water inlet, there will be just a few meters left to literally install it. We will be able to do this in the winter. Also in the winter we plan to install protective screens that will exclude sound pollution from our neighbors with their dacha plots. So let's say that we are approaching winter in the most prepared state. We have completed the main engineering works. We were able to almost completely leave the outside part to go inside the building. And this was possible thanks to the pace of investment, the pace of financing that you, our dear participants, viewers, investors, partners were able to organize. So a huge thank you to all of you for that. And I think that over the winter we will be able to do some serious work inside the building. Work is also being done in the second floor. 
we can see lockers for the locker room. This will be the men's locker room, then the shower room. The locker room for female employees is also there. And there are already quite many lockers mounted, walls are painted, skirting boards are being installed. And then, of course, we will need to prepare certain places where it will be convenient to, well, deal with the outer clothes, benches, mirrors, and all that. Well, we are now on the balcony, and we can observe all that space. It is filled in with engineering networks, communications, and everything necessary to carry out our activity. It is worth noting a very important point. Many people said at the beginning, why do you need such high ceilings? What will you do with them? Well, I think that now this question is no longer necessary, and it is clear and understandable why all that was needed. I think that our tour for today comes to its logical end. We have shown you the main processes, the main works. And let us try to answer one question, which we have often been asked lately. When is the official deadline for the enterprise to be handed over to the State Commission and receive the relevant documents? To date, the deadline has been moved, and it is March the 30th, 2024. This is the day when the construction should be fully completed and we will need to hand over the enterprise to the State Commission. The question is, what happens if we don't succeed in that? There is an answer there. First, there will be immediate penalties. The company will have to pay a certain amount, which, frankly speaking, in terms of the cost of the entire project, on the one hand, we can say that it is not that big, but still, it is the money, the money that could have been spent and can still be spent on our direct needs. That is construction, maintenance, some working capital as well. So naturally, this is a very undesirable scenario. But this is not the only thing that can happen. In addition to penalties, we may lose the status of a resident of special economic zone. And in order to understand why this is disadvantageous for the enterprise, let us remember what preferences this residency gives. First of all, it is of course significant tax benefits. If you add up the benefits for all categories, you get savings of about 70%. That's colossal. And these are in fact the conditions due to which techno-innovative enterprises that develop new products, new inventions, new technologies can exist. Because we all know that the process of development of these technologies is quite a time-consuming activity. And the process of return on investment is also stretched in time. Therefore, such taxation significantly simplifies the life of such enterprises. Of course, we are already approaching the stage as prepared as possible, because the degree of readiness of the building is very high. We have the necessary equipment, we already have the technology, we have the experience, we have passed many of these stages, and it is a bit easier for us than for the companies that are just studying. But nevertheless, this privilege, this opportunity, these benefits have a very serious impact on the viability and profitability of the enterprise. Among other things, we have a very big advantage, a very big benefit, which is buying the land where our facility is being built. Now we can buy out this land for 1% of its real value. And this is a strong argument in favor of residency in the special economic zone. Because otherwise, the purchase of land with an area of 2.1 hectares well, for those who are interested, you can familiarize yourself with the prices of land plots located on the territory of Moscow. I think that you will like what you will see in the context of us being residents. 
So, among other things, it is the possibility of organizing a free custom zone. This is the possibility of, let's say, creating the territory of another state on our side in order to take advantage of the possibility of non-clearance of certain categories of goods, certain categories of materials, in order to make transit deliveries directly to other countries bypassing the Russian Federation. Potentially, this is a very good opportunity. These are probably the main milestones that we need in order to function successfully. And of course, in case of inability to be a resident of the special economic zone, the enterprise can operate in any case. But the burden of the financial component, the burden on maintenance and on everything that follows, it will be much higher, of course. That is why today we are making every effort to successfully approach the process of handing over the building to the State Commission, to perform all construction works, to put it into operation and to work following the way we initially chose, outlined, and the way that we are now implementing. What is needed to do all of the above? It is necessary to maintain a high rate of investment, because today, as we said in our past videos, the only thing keeping us from doing construction work is the rate of investment. We have seen that the pace has increased significantly recently. And a lot of that is due to your support. It was all thanks to your trust. The fact that we have left the outside zone is just evidence that there is a direct link between the rate of financing and the fulfillment of works. By and large, we are talking about the same thing. But this is really the stumbling block that we have here. Therefore, today we have every chance to complete the construction on time. There is only one issue. But I hope that with the joint efforts of the Solomash team and Sol Group team and the team of our partners and investors, we will be able to complete the construction on time. We just need to make steps on this way. Well, at this point I want to thank you for your participation, for your trust, for your support. Thank you for defending the honor of our project in social networks, for bringing the right truthful information to our viewers, to potential investors, to potential partners. I repeat that all this has become possible only thanks to the efforts of many people from different countries of the world, united by one goal. So thank you. We will continue our march through the tasks and challenges that we yet have to overcome. Thank you and see you again. Well, friends, you have seen it all for yourselves. You see what stage of readiness the project has, how high it is. You realize that there is not much left to complete the financing. And only together we can complete the work we have started. And I'm sure that we will do it together. The power of crowdfunding has already proved itself. We have proved that with the help of this method of financing, were able to achieve incredible results, which we are sharing with you here today. I would like to note that the interest in Slavyanka combined winding technology, the interest in the project today, not only remains at a consistently high level, but the interest in it is constantly growing. And we can judge about this based on the results that we obtain, based on the figures, and now we would like to talk about them. How many investors, how many partners, how many investments have been attracted? Let's find out about all of this. And now I would like to give the floor to Pavel Shatsky. Let's have a look. Uh, 
Greetings, dear viewers. Pavel, thank you very much for giving me the floor. In anticipation of the 19th stage, I want to tell you about the results of the 18th stage of funding. We have 466,316 participants registered in our back office. This means that almost half a million people around the world know about our project, company and technology. 61,753 investors are co-owners of Solmash. 18,068 partners are already earning money with us right now. They earn on informational promotion of the project, technology and company all over the world. Thanks to our coordinated work, 70 million $174,000 have been invested in the project. This figure is constantly updated. You can see it in your back office, in the roadmap section. 88,466 investment packages have been registered. 37 billion 63 million 627,474 investment shares belong to our investors. These are shares that will later become shares of Solvash. This year we had a record month of August in terms of the number of payments and replenishment in the back office. The sum of payments amounted to $3,179,190. This is an absolute record for the whole history of the project and the sum of replenishments, that is, investments, amounted to $2,524,311. Also, if we are talking about records, this year India overtook Russia in terms of the number of investors, despite the fact that in 2017 the project was launched on the Russian market and only the Russian-speaking audience took part in it. We opened a representative office in India much later. But despite this, already this year, India has overtaken Russia in terms of the number of investors. We also see that a large number of French-speaking African countries are among the top 10 countries in terms of the number of investors. It is also Vietnam, Indonesia and Nepal, that is, countries from all over the world where national representative offices have been opened. Despite this, Russia's share in the total amount of investments is 40%, or $28,074,213. The markets of Vietnam, India, Indonesia also have a significant share. And further on, you can see on your slide the top 10 countries in terms of the amount of investment in the project. We opened 28 representations and 4 representations during this investment stage in Austria, Liechtenstein, Switzerland and Mali. As of today, we have also opened 10 offices, which are equipped for presentations, consultations of our current and potential customers for partners to work in the office, as well as for consulting potential customers of Sovelmash. There we have samples of motors as well as finished products that use Sovelmash motors in the form of boat motors and kits from the company resource. Our offices regularly host offline events, as well as online webinars. In total, we have held 825 webinars during this investment phase. They were presentation webinars and webinars with guests. We have conducted 347 live presentations in the office and on roadshows, as well as six international conferences. All of that is done to make sure that as many customers around the world as possible learn about and take advantage of the opportunity the company provides. 
Thanks to our regular information agenda, which is conducted in 23 languages, we have been able to provide our customers with news, report news, on how our project and company development is going. A total of 440 text news items were produced, as well as 114 video news and 1,152 unique emails were sent to our customers. Everything to keep them informed about the development and implementation of the project. On December 29th, there will be a change of the investment stage. And I want to tell you that we will see a record discount reduction of 20%. This is because the risks for investors are decreasing, so the value of shares is increasing accordingly. Do not miss the opportunity that you will learn about today. Use it, so that you will not regret it later. That's all I have to say. I wish you all the best. I will pass the floor to my colleagues. Pavel, thank you very much for the concrete figures. Now our viewers have the opportunity to judge about the pace of the project development, not only on the basis of the tasks completed, not only on the basis of the plans, but also, of course, on the basis of the figures. This is always very important. And we have disclosed the figures in as much detail as possible for you today. And of course, we do not plan to stop there. We continue to conduct various promotions so that you can invest as profitably as possible. Thanks to this, the rate of financing is increasing, which means additional funds are coming in for the realization of the project. First of all, of course, today I would like to remind you about the lottery organized by Solar Group. As part of this lottery, you can win very valuable prizes. The main prize is an electric car, Chang'an. Each of you can become its owner. In addition to the car itself, we have three rounds of the lottery. And in each round, you can win one of the valuable prizes. As many as 50 winners in each round will win either investment shares or the main prize. Investment shares and a Denzel Liberty electric bike, which is equipped with an electric motor with combined winding technology Slavyanka. We will draw three such motorbikes in the final of each round of our lottery. Well, and in the super final, it will be an electric car. You don't need to do anything special to participate in the lottery. All you need to do is invest, purchase new investment packages or pay off your installment plan. And for every $100 invested, you get one lottery ticket. The more you invest, the more lottery tickets you can get. For example, by investing $1,000, you already get 10 lottery tickets. I would like to draw attention to the fact that our lottery is win-win. Because for each lottery ticket, you get additional cash back in the form of 10% to your investment account. If, for example, you invested $1,000, received 10 lottery tickets, then as much as $100 or 10% of the amount will be returned to your account and this $100 will be available for future investments. Please note that they are available for three months from the date you receive this cashback. So don't miss out on this opportunity. Please note that there are various other activities within the lottery. For example, you get extra investment shares if you pay your installments earlier than planned. So friends, today you have all the opportunities to get the best investment conditions on the one hand, and on the other hand, to participate in the drawing of valuable prizes. And of course, thus you help the project to gain funding. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that the lottery is not only an opportunity for personal investments. 
I remind you that you can always tell your friends and colleagues about this opportunity. And perhaps by doing so, you will encourage them to become investors. Therefore, such activities are also opportunities for partners who are actively developing our project in various countries and cities. In fact, the lottery is not the only interesting promotion that we have in place. You can always look at other relevant offers. In the back office there is a special section called Promotions. Don't forget to visit it, to be aware of all the most interesting offers. And do not forget that our investment stage is changing. We are moving from the 18th to the 19th stage of financing. And of course, at the 19th stage, such favorable conditions for investment will no longer be available. Well, and we are moving on. And now we will talk about the development of Slavanka combined winding technology in different countries around the world. The technology of combined windings has long been known all over the world. It is used in different parts of our planet. And of course, this is one of the best indicators of its effectiveness. There are people who are not just using this technology. There are people who are building their business on it. And now I would like to give the floor to one of such people, Andrei Lobov, an engineer and entrepreneur from Russia, who has been developing Slavanka technology for a long time, and he has been doing it successfully. Let's see what achievements Andrei has in this area. Good afternoon, friends. I am currently in the town of Okhred. Behind me you see the Pearl of the Balkans, Lake Okhred. This lake is protected by UNESCO. It has very unique nature, unique for the whole Europe. It is the biggest place where there is water, where there is a lot of water, where there is the purest water. When you look into the water, you can see how clear it is. At 25 meters, you can see the bottom. And we tested our motor in this very place. We tested our boat motor, which we made with the DA95S combined winding motor. This is a motor which is manufactured by Viktor Aristov in China. It is serious production. They use combined windings there, and we are testing it here, on this beautiful lake. We have conducted tests on several boats. It was a dinghy. It was a traditional Okred boat. Which is 5.3 meters long. According to the passport, it can carry eight people. And there is an even longer boat, seven meters long. It is also a traditional displacement awkward boat. It carries 11 people, plus the captain. These are the three main awkward boats. We tested our motor on them, our boat motor with a combined winding. I was extremely surprised. It was a very interesting experience. I fell in love with these boats, because our motor, such a small electric motor, can move such a huge boat weighing 1.5 tons on the lake. That is, together with people, it is about 1.5 tons. And we moved quietly on the lake, and it was a very decent speed. Before that, we met with environmentalists. There is a big team of environmentalists here, who care a lot about the local nature, about this water. And they asked us a lot to carry out tests on all the boats, for us to show to local businessmen, local fishermen, that you can use electric motors, 
Don't pollute this water, this beautiful water with gasoline. The Okred Sea or Lake Okred, it is very much like the sea, you know, because you can see behind my back where the waves are like today. It is so clean. There are so few places like this in Europe. This one is really unique. It is considered the biggest after Lake Baikal. And environmentalists are very concerned about this nature. They are pushing through a law to ban two-stroke motors on this lake. And there are almost 2,000 two-stroke motors used here. When you pour oil separately and gasoline separately. And all of this gets into the water. Friends, it's been a pleasure to be here. We also conducted a test on a gliding boat. And our motor also showed very good results. But the most interesting thing for us is traditional awkward boats. Because in the season from May to September, there is a huge number of tourists riding on them here. Tourists come here from all over the world. They come here and admire the unique nature. What else would I like to tell you? What do we plan here? People liked our motor so much, they liked so much how it behaves, that we have already had a meeting with a man who is installing solar panels on houses here. He said that he was very inspired by our project. He will definitely help install solar panels on a traditional awkward boat. A team, a small group of people, said that they really want to buy a new boat and install solar panels on it. And by next season, in May, this boat will go out on the lake to take tourists for a ride and show all the businessmen, entrepreneurs, those who do business on the lake, to show them that it is possible to travel on water just on solar energy. It's a wonderful project. I support it with all my heart. And I hope it is fully implemented. What else happened this year? This year there was a very, very interesting project that we launched in Indonesia. We launched a solar boat project on the island of Kalimantan. There, in Indonesia, on the island of Tarakan, we met with people at the university who invited us there. They are so eager to support our project. They decided to independently install special electronic equipment that will allow the boat to move in the sea without human intervention. This equipment has already been purchased. It has already arrived. The solar panels have arrived. The inverter has arrived. The navigation for the boat has arrived. Because all these will have to be connected with the sailors, with the port, so that there are no problems with the law. And I have already been informed that if our solar boat can cover something like 10 miles, it will be able to participate in the international solar boat race. Such races are held, and I think that we will participate in them. Also, this year our team went to Latin America, where we were able to test our motor on a local boat in Ecuador. Unfortunately, there was a high transom and we could not show good results. But our project did not go unnoticed. And just after our departure, we were approached by entrepreneurs from Colombia, from the Amazon. They saw our motor. They were very interested specifically in the electric solar motor. They also take tourists on their long boats. And we have already developed a motor for them. 
It is specific. It does not have a leg, like a traditional motor installed on boats. It has a straight shaft with a drive to the propeller straight away. We have now produced such a motor. Again, it is based on the DA95S motor. Solar panels will be purchased. And the project will be produced in Colombia. A run of solar boats in three countries where the Amazon passes. That is, the solar boat will pass through Colombia, pass through Ecuador, and pass through Peru. I think it's going to be a very interesting run of the boat through the Amazon. We'll cover it all in the news, and hopefully, I am already sure of it, will show very good results. Now, as for the boats, of course, we couldn't avoid India here. We tested our motor on the Ganges River, where the Ganges comes down from the Himalayas. It has a very high current. The town of Rishikesh is a sacred place where many pilgrims come. There we also tested our motor on a police rescue boat. Great results were shown. Everybody was happy. And I think that will close the boat topic for the time being. And I will tell you about where else we have managed to use our motors this year. DA95S motor. I consider this motor to be the best for today. It can develop power, for example, on a boat from 4 to 8 kilowatts. And on a tricycle, I think you can go up to 15 kilowatts. This year we had a very interesting project. Earlier we assembled a tricycle with a DA90S motor. And we made a run. It was a competition, it was a run between 10 or 11 cars on solar energy. We were able to travel almost 3000 kilometers across Kazakhstan. Our tricycle went through Baikonur from the border with the Russian Federation. We went through Baikonur and finished in Almaty. Well, we were not moving as fast as everyone else. We have very heavy vehicle. We had a lot of problems that we had to solve as we moved. But we coped with everything. And the more interesting it was for our spectators. On the second day, we had more than a thousand people supporting us. And they were all watching the race. It was very interesting. We made sure that our motor passed all the 3,000 kilometers. And cooling wasn't needed anywhere. That is, the fan was not turned on once. The same tricycle was assembled in India. And we showed it there too. A passenger tuk-tuk was also assembled there. And now we are holding negotiations with our partners in India, who are very keen to do a solar run in India. You may see a solar run in India in the near future. A solar tricycle has also been assembled in North Kalimantan on the island of Tarakan. I was present. I tested it. Of course, it's a very heavy equipment, the traditional machinery that transports goods around the island. That's the kind of equipment they want. We are using the DA100S motor there, which is a motor that has now been discontinued. But this is a version of the DA95S motor. But it is a six-pole motor, and here it is a four-pole one. In my mind, it's more preferable. But nevertheless, the kit was delivered to Indonesia, it was installed on the tricycle, and we are waiting for the results to see that this tricycle will also participate in some solar races. What else is interesting? To date, I have been contacted almost daily from Ecuador. 
from the rice paddies. Farmers contact me. Farmers use very powerful pumps in their rice paddies to water their fields around the clock. And they use a lot of gasoline. It takes a lot of fuel to irrigate the paddy fields. They asked us to manufacture solar pumps for rice fields. Now, this project has been launched and calculations have already been made. Perhaps in the near future I will be able to tell you about and show you this project. Also, Ecuador wants to launch a solar tricycle and they are already selecting a donor for this project. What else are we planning? Solar Group team is planning to visit Nigeria, that's Africa, in the near future. The partners there are also contacting us. They also have a huge number of tuk-tuks that transport people around the city. It probably ranks second after India. They use Bajaj vehicles, which are yellow passenger tuk-tuks, just like the ones we assembled in India. And they are very much asking us to assemble such a tricycle, such a tuk-tuk, to make it solar, to show it to local partners, local businessmen, local entrepreneurs. And they said that we would be pleasantly surprised at how much interest there is in motors with combined windings. The Solar Group team visited China this year, at the beginning of the summer. We traveled through China, visited the factories where the housing for the solar mesh angle grinder was being developed for our project. For solar mesh, for this handheld equipment, which will use our motor with combined windings. I visited the city and the enterprise where the DA95S motor is already mass produced. I visited the facility where the Liberty bike, which is an enduro bike with the DA95S motor, is already in serious production. It was a very efficient trip. I was also in the city of Weihai with our partner Viktor Aristov. I saw the enterprise where they invent and assemble the equipment. All in all, it has been a very, very productive year. I thank you all for your attention. They are all very interesting projects. Thanks to the motors that are already being produced. I hope that very soon construction of Savalmash in Zelenograd will be completed and we will see even more powerful and interesting motors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrei. Andrei is always very interesting to listen to. I am always very happy that he continues to reach new heights to realize new projects, and of course, we wish him further success in this. I remind you that in order for our broadcast to be seen by as many people as possible, be sure to like it, to send the link to this broadcast to your friends. Let's make sure that as many people as possible know about our project and the information that has been prepared for you today. Now I would like to give the floor to the next speaker, Viktor Aristov. This is a person who has been cooperating with Dmitry Duinov for a long time, who has been developing the technology of combined wine Slavyanka for a long time. Let's find out what news Viktor has for us. Good afternoon, dear partners. Greetings from China. And at the moment, not from Weihai, 
but from Zhejiang province, where I'm working together with Hangzhou University to develop electric aircraft. This is probably the most important piece of news for me, more generally. Many people know that I have been working in Weihai, or rather I am working in Weihai, because ASPP Weihai continues to operate and the motors are being produced. But some changes have taken place. Many people probably know that last year sanctions were imposed from the American side against China on chips, on electronics. And we had problems with the production of large controllers. Therefore, since last year, we have practically stopped production of large motors, more than 5 kilowatt, due to the lack of controllers. At the moment, we continue to look for opportunities to produce controllers of this power to use the same motors. But by this moment, only DA90S and DA95S motors are left in production. Of these motors, DA95S motors are mostly in demand, as they are used in the production of two types of electric motorcycles. Many probably knew or know these are Liberty and Cafe Racer motorcycles. Also, these same motors are used by Hungarian company for construction. These motors are used in trailers to make the ride safer, to improve performance. But as I said, big changes have taken place. And I got a university contract and I'm now working on building electric aircraft. Many people are asking the question, what does this work, or what does this work of Victor Aristov bring to the Solvash project? Dmitry Alexandrovich has already mentioned many times that my main work is to popularize this technology. But in addition, I'm doing my best to find further or future customers for the production or development of our electric motors. This is the focus of my work and the main focus of my work with the university, as well as the development of hybrid transport aircraft that will use our electric motors and our electric generators in the future. I can't tell you much about this project. And I ask you not to ask a lot of questions in this direction, because the project is not quite open. But information has already leaked out that I'm working in this direction, so I'm voicing this message to you. Now, some more information about what started a few months ago. A new company was created with Academician Tupolev. I'm working with him here on aircraft development. A company was established in Weihai and Tsingtao in the Shanghai Corporation Organization Zone to build airboats. These airboats will initially use internal combustion motors, but with the aim of putting electric motors later. As you understand, my task is exactly the use of electric motors of Slavyanka technology in the future. And since such motors do not exist, the task and work of Sovolmaj will be to ensure that these motors can be installed on these vehicles. This is all the main news so far. The prospects lie precisely in this news, so I hope I have answered the questions. These are the prospects for further promotion of our technology and finding customers at the level of government agencies, at the level of large companies. 
This is the main use or my main effort with which I am promoting, trying to promote this technology. The construction of our Design and Technological Bureau is almost at the final stage. And therefore, I wish us all to be patient. And I wish all of us continued success. All the best. Thank you, Victor. You always tell us very important, interesting, useful information. I think that all our investors support you and are happy with your results. I'm glad that our project, indeed, unites very different people, unites people from very different countries, and everyone does something to bring the technology of combined Wynex Slavyanka to a new level. And of course, to make the project happen. Our project became truly international a long time ago. We have our people everywhere, in every country, on every continent. And now I would like to show you a short video, where you can see the faces of the very people who are helping this technology to develop. Let's watch this video. Dear colleagues, partners, investors and friends, today we are gathered here to see clearly and make the last step, the last leap in our common project. We all believe in the doing of Modus project and Solar Group. I am convinced of this every time I watch the progress of the construction site. I am very pleased that we are taking the first step in the corporatization process and starting to form the shareholder register. This means that we are as close as possible to completing the project and obtaining a stake in the Solvash business. And now I know there is only a little bit of effort left to make sure that we achieve our goal. The change of stage confirms that the project is moving towards the intended goal. Mitu Duinov's team demonstrates its professionalism time after time, solving the tasks at hand. There is not much left to do, and the project will be implemented. Let's unite around our project Slavanka Technology, Solmash and Solar Group companies. I say our because the project has really become popular, close and important for each participant personally. Therefore, we do not just have the same goal. We share and defend the same values today. This is a prosperous future of the planet. Let's combine our energy, knowledge and experience to create something great. Solmash is approaching the release of its products. Soon we will see handheld power tools with motors at Slavyanka. Based on the technical characteristics, this product will have no competitors on the market. So I have no doubts about its success. And this is just the beginning. Slavanka technology is beginning to appear in Latin America. And this is very important for us. There are already agreements on some projects. And we are waiting for Andrei Lobov, head of the production cooperation resource, to launch them. The electric tuk-tuk race in Kazakhstan, which took place in 2023, showed how efficient and ergonomic modus with Slavanka technology are. After such a demonstration of the technology's capabilities, no one can have any doubts. Looking forward to the next races. Solar Group unites. We have become a part of one international team thanks to this company. We are like a huge family, where everyone values and cherishes the other. And this is our strength. It is our unification that allows us to move forward and come to success. We live in different countries and cities, but everyone knows and realizes how much depends on him. Without you, without all of us, without those who believed in the project and supported it, we would not be here today. 
Your participation and support made everything we have achieved possible. We strive for a sustainable economy and a society based on the principles of responsibility to future generations and care for the environment. This is our goal and we must not give up. Today you are here for the webinar. Let's take a look at the important key events for the project this year. And together we'll make plans for the next year. We also want to share news and talk in detail about the next steps. We are on the right track and very excited about it. Friends, this is a great video. And personally, I'm very inspired by such videos. Because when you see these faces, when you realize that they are united by a common idea and that they are working every day so that the project can develop, then, of course, it is very motivating and energizing. Moreover, I know many of them personally. I know what I'm talking about. I know it's really true. Many of them give their whole life, all their energy to our project. When you realize that, there is no doubt that we can fail. No doubt of that kind. Well, friends, you have seen it all for yourself. Today we have tried to give you maximum information about how the project is developing, what is happening now, and what further steps we need to go through together with you. The strength of our project is that we are as open as possible. We do not hide anything, we do not conceal anything, we always tell everything as it is. Even if this information is unpleasant or someone does not like it. If it is there, then we will tell you about it. Because this is the particularity of our project. Our project is public. We publicly report on all results, all news. And this is our strength. Moreover, this method of financing has proved itself perfectly. And by the example of our project, it proves that it is possible to implement large projects with collective investments, with crowd investing, which we are successfully doing. We are moving on. We are moving to a new 19th stage of financing. And you have just a few weeks left to invest in the project on the terms of the 18th investment stage. Moreover, until the end of the 18th investment stage, we will have a lottery where you can win a huge number of valuable prizes, as well as get cash back by receiving lottery tickets. I remind you of this. Do not miss the opportunities that are there for you today. They will make your investment in the project even more profitable and will help the project to increase its funding rate. At the end of this broadcast, I would like to ask you to like this video, this broadcast, to repost it, to send the link to the broadcast to your friends, colleagues. By doing so, you will allow them to know all the latest information about this broadcast, as well as make them interested in our project, and thus you could help it develop. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching this live broadcast to the end. And I'll see you in the next videos and webinars.